Amidst an escalating diplomatic row between Maldives and India, Maldives has asked India to withdraw its military personnel from the archipelago by the 15th of March. This is not the first time the Maldivian president has asked for the withdrawal of Indian troops. This request was first raked up amidst the COP28 summit when Maldivian President Muizu and Prime Minister Modi engaged in talks in the sidelines. Well, according to the latest government figures, there are a total of 88 Indian military personnel in the Maldives and were in fact sent to Maldives at various points to train Maldivian troops in both combat and reconnaissance and rescue aid operations. India has played a critical role in training the Maldivian military in the past three decades, especially since the success of Operation Cactus in November 1988. But the question that arises is, what's next? Joining us at this point is Major General A.K. Sivach, defense expert. Uh, also with us is Commodore Anil Jay Singh, defense analyst. Wing Commander Praful Bakshi, defense expert, joins us live. Patikrit Pine, international affairs expert, also is with us uh, on the program. Let me uh, make a start with you first, Major General A.K. Sivach. Is this a continuation of his earlier stand or has something new prompted this latest statement by the Maldivian president? Uh Uday, see, what has happened is that uh, the election which he has won has been won on India out uh, uh, approach and uh, that has uh, got him uh, the seat there as far as uh, Maldives concerned. But what is now making difference is that his visit of China. After he has visited China, he has become more boisterous. The way he is passing the statement that we may be a small nation, but we can't be taken for granted. And also trying to convey that uh, uh, India must withdraw its military personnel, which are there uh, by 15th March. But if you look into the whole thing, now as far as India and uh, Maldives relationship are concerned, you know, it is India which has been helping the Maladi when whenever they are in, in trouble. It was in 1988, very rightly brought by you, when there was a coup. Uh, India has sent its forces to ensure that coup is busted out. And the second thing is, whenever they have economic problem, India has come forward. After COVID-19, India is the one which has sent them the medicines uh, free of cost. When uh, there was a water crisis, we have said a water, water crisis. And they are totally dependent on us, more majority of, on the food imports, which is rice, sugar and flour. Also on a medical tourism, majority of people from Maldives are coming for medical to India. Now, having said so, the relationship between India and Maldives uh, are very cordial, other than uh, what has happened now. And their dependence on India is very huge. As far as India is concerned, Maldives is important to us because it is strategically located in the Indian Ocean where about uh, 60 to 70 percent trade goes and therefore India will like its presence there. And since uh, it, this point has become now a point of uh, confrontation that the 70 plus uh, military personnel to be uh, removed from there by 15th March, uh, we just wanted to tell Maldives they have not gone of their own. There is a understanding and a package which was signed between government of Maldives and India. And these have been uh, basically for the help of Maldives, not for Indian. That there are two helicopters which are basically for casualty evacuation as well as disaster management. And the Dornier aircraft is for recce and surveillance. But certainly it looks like that the since he has come on a platform of India out, he is going more closer to China. He will get into a debt trap of China, no doubt. But as on today, he's enjoying that honeymoon period with China. And they have also agreed to give him $130 million for development of Mali. But it looks to me that as the time will pass by, he will realize it. The biggest mistake which is made by Maldives by going closer to China, that they will get into debt trap, like what has happened to Sri Lanka, what has happened to some, to some extent to Pakistan. But certainly, as on today, he is playing to the gallery and he is having this impression that India must take out its military personnel by 15th March at all costs. Uday. All right, let me uh, take that across to Commodore Anil Jai Singh as well. Uh, Commodore uh, Singh, uh, what uh, should be India's uh, reaction to this? Uh, uh, do you interpret this as a direct correlation with his visit to China? The fact that he's reiterated the statement just after that visit? Well, he has been uh, wanting uh, to get India out. It's been part of his election sort of rhetoric. But uh, one would have thought that, you know, once he comes into power, he'd sort of tone it down because he'd understand the importance of maintaining good relations with India. 
Yes, China is definitely been a factor. Uh, he's definitely pro-China. There's no doubt about that. His first visit after taking over as president has been to China. He got an audience with Xi Jinping. Uh, they signed a number of uh, agreements over various things. And of course, China will extract his pound of flesh. And I think this is something that uh, President Yuzu should be wary of because it has happened before. Presently, I think the, the Maldives owe more than a billion dollars to China and just a couple of hundred million to India, maybe less than 150 million to India, despite so much development work having, having done by India in that country. Insofar as the military withdrawal is concerned, well, you mentioned it earlier. Frankly speaking, I think the 75, 80 personnel there are more to serve the Maldivians than for any strategic gain for India. We provide them search and rescue. We provide them uh, casualty evacuation. We provide them coastal security. We provide them radar coverage. We provide we provide them everything. We are not getting anything really out of out of this presence there, except the fact that we are generating goodwill. But I think you know, uh, I think things will change because and India must sort of hold its horses for the time being and not overreact as we overreacted a few days ago, which probably alienated a few normal Maldivians also because nobody likes this country to be insulted. And this so-called boycott called by social media of people traveling to Maldives, I think, was a bit of a storm in a teacup. But certainly, we have to watch it, watch Maldives carefully. We have to continue to cultivate that country. That country is very important to India strategically. We have to prevent China from gaining a foothold in that country. Uh, because the next step will be, once they get a foothold, the next will be they will take over some island, which they already have the lease on a couple of islands. And the third step would be what they've done in the South China Sea, militarize that island. And that is certainly not in India's interest. And, you know, uh, I was just reading somewhere that the first setback to President Musil has already come. The mayoral poll today for the mayor of Malay, uh, his party is trailing badly. And it's back to the Maldivian Democratic Party, which is pro-India, which has got a considerable lead. And please do not forget, President Musil was the mayor of Malay. He stepped out from their office to contest the presidential election. So this will be a huge setback for him very soon after taking over. And I think he should start uh, smelling the tea leaves now. As to, yes. He has to sort of play his cards very carefully. Maldives has a strategic location and Maldives needs to play its cards very carefully to keep everybody on board and extract whatever it can, uh, whatever advantage it can for its own development and capacity building. Okay, let me in fact uh, take that uh, to uh, Wing Commander Bakshi as well. Wing Commander Praful Bakshi, you know, some, some in India are saying uh, this latest statement is a result of the recent uh, social media storm after the Prime Minister's Lakshadweep visit. Do you uh, correlate the two? Or do you believe this is a, you know, a direct relation to, of course, his campaign during his elections and also uh, the China imprint on his presidency? Uh, thank you, uh, Let me, uh, this, this is a very important loaded question you have asked. Let me just go back a little. When we are mentioning the coup d'etat which was being taking, taking place against uh, Abdul Gayoom, at that time, it is when the uh, India had inducted the brigade by IL-76. In the next IL-76, I had gone there with 80 media personnel as a spokesperson. And I had seen the presence of Pakistanis out there already who were resenting. And they were anti-India right from that time. We had actually taken an armored car along with the, in IL-76 and we presented them in a ceremony. And thereafter, we could see that they were anti-Indian media. They were physically abused, trying to abuse our people, and they were not very happy. But somehow or other, our relations developed. That time, Chinese have not made their presence that much out there. That is way back at that time. It was Pakistan, which was very much there, and the remnants of LTTE, which were there. We saved them, no doubt about it. They're thankless, forget about it. But the question is, China has taken this step very forward, very well, as the... Commodore was just on mentioning this. China has already looks trying to locate a submarine base. They are already trying to put the starting process of the artificial island. And South China Sea effort will become very strong for China if Malay I mean, Maldives is in their hands. So question is now, what should India policy? This is a let me tell you, Uday, uh, our weak doctrinal approach. It has ended in this. We showed our strategic airlift capability at that time. People were asking us to go into Fiji at that time. Somehow or other, we were not very clear. And for a long time, we were not clear as to what induction of troops we should have, whether helicopters or anything increasing. At that time, the 
there was a request that we want to increase our armed forces. I think we should have taken it very dynamically at that time. Probably we, we looked into the various things. It did not happen. I, I don't have to mention about the trade. The, we were mentioned helping them in the uh, tourism. We were helping them in various aspects, including trade and important things. But we have to worry about strategic presence of Pakistan and China combined. That is what is our worry now. We have missed out some important steps, I know, but we must not worry about more about that, but we must make sure that we don't allow this and we have to be aggressive. Our patrolling has to increase. We don't have to get caught on a back foot because in this area, the, the trade route, route to South, South China Sea, most of the you know, fuel and minerals, they pass through that. 40% to 50% of world trade passes through this area. We have to be, we have to watch out for our interests very carefully. Maldives, yes, it's going uh, from a hand uh, influence. Yes, it is under an Islamic influence. But forget about it. Chinese are taking a great advantage of that. They are doing it as China will take it. But China is tightening the strength around us. Coco Island, now this, Sri Lanka, Gwadar. So many things are happening. I personally feel we have to spend more time now on our strategic activities and thinking rather than other sundry activities which we are involved. Whatever the case may be, Uday, this is a serious challenge to us by throwing us out, literally telling our forces to leave by 15th March. That is a very, very uh, you know insulting process after we have done so much for them. But we should not despair. We know, know what they are. We should forget about them. We must look after what we can do to negate China and Pakistan. That is our interest. That is we must look for the next step forward, what they are going both to do. Maldives may come or go. Maldives may come crying to you again when something may happen. So we have to be very care, careful and we have to give our external affairs must be very clear and firm about it. Not like Bhutan, even Bhutan at once given us a, called India a threat. Nepal was doing it. How come we are all losing our states all around us? We also have to look inwards in our own homework. Somewhere down the line, we are missing out major activities. And we should not keep thumping our chest that our foreign policy is very good. Somewhere down the line, our foreign policy has to be adjusted accordingly. Go there. But the good point, let me bring you in here. On, on your, of course, uh, you know, interpretation of, of what has led this strong statement once again being made by Muizu. Uh, but more importantly, you know, what do you believe India will do next? Uh, good afternoon. See, first of all, let me uh, tell you one thing. I think it's very important for everyone to understand that uh, Maldives is, an, is a sovereign country, right? And they have their own right to take whatever decision they take. Um, you know, they might face a lot of consequences. That's another thing. But the moment we start saying that they were all under our fold, that, that's where we lose the plot. They are an independent country. They are a sovereign country. They have taken a decision. It might be a stupid decision, but it's a decision. The problem what is uh, happening with Maldives is that President Muizu, and I don't know under what intoxication right now he is in, he is burning bridges with it. I mean, there are occasions where we had differences of opinion with the United States. We took oil from Russia, but we did not burn bridges. That is the majority of any kind of diplomacy. Now, suddenly, if we say, oh, the Chinese are coming, the Chinese were always there. There's not something very new. Uh, almost a decade back, the GMR airport in Malay was, uh, you know, handed over to the Chinese. The GMR, not GMR, I think there's another company. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting its name. Um, they, it, was, it was an Indian co company, a $500 million deal. Suddenly, the Mali government, the Mali Maldives government took it over and gave it to somebody else. There were litigations, there were arbitrations. The reality is this. The Sri Lankans have turned around. The Hamban Tota port accepted is, is there, the, the Chinese are controlling it. But the, the Sri Lankans are putting now restrictions on the, uh, on, on the presence of uh, the Chinese uh, Navy ships over there. Secondly, they have given the Indians to develop the Kolo, part of the Colombo port. The Nepalese have turned around. So let me tell you one thing. It is not that China have entirely taken over South Asia. So let's give 
due credit to the ministry of external affairs where it is due uh, let me tell you india ha india has at the same time expanded its reach in the whole of uh, indian ocean region whether it is through our bases in seychelles or mauritius or whether our expanding our reach to south china sea expanding and deepening our cooperation with vietnam or philippines this is is a it's a tug of war it will continue but if you ask me from the muizu perspective muizu from day one was the bow and his three ministers were the arrow so he did entirely what he did um keeping in mind that he would come out and give this statement look he thought that he can you know he can get away this time also by abusing the indians the by abusing the indian prime minister the people of india have reacted and i think people of india have the right to take a decision if they don't want to go to maldives we cannot say that oh they have overreacted it's my money i have the right not to go to maldives and instead go to lakshadweep the prime minister of india has all the right to promote lakshadweep he cannot be restricted by anybody oh why are we not promoting or doing this because maldives will be at loss uh see let me tell you one thing i think strategically india today is far more strong than what it was 20 30 years 20 10 20 years back but one thing i strongly support what the government of india is doing is this that we should stop bending backward for the sake of keeping our neighbors happy you know bogi bill bridge in assam was built by india uh for 5000 crore the bangladeshis gave it to a chinese company a similar bridge on the padma river was built by 35000 crore for 35000 crore in bangladesh so countries like bangladesh sri lanka nepal pakistan and invariably now even maldives are in huge debt trap so it's not that the chinese are coming and doling out everything to them yes there is a strong possibility the chinese will do something in terms of setting up a naval presence but there's a huge difference between having a naval presence and a naval base because there are logistical challenges in terms of doing it from south china sea all over to maldives so i'm sure you know it didn't happen in one day i'm sure our strategic thinkers uh, in the armed, armed forces and in the ministries have calculated all these things long time back and so counter measures have been there beyond the point i think we have seen whether it's kind of nepal or in case of maldives or in some other countries regimes when they change their orientation towards a particular country change and i think india has never been like that it has hyper, it has never hyperated its relations india has never said that just because you have good relation with me don't have relation with china only thing india has said is that do not allow your countries to be used as base for surveillance on my country i think it was a fair thing but if countries like maldives do not understand eventually what's going to happen uday is this that yes they are that they are radicalized at least to certain extent at least a section of the country yes there there is an anti india sentiment but when uh, the coffers start drying down there will be backlash in maldives and i think the government of india has been very nuanced it did not give out any very bizarre statements it was the people of the country who reacted so i think keeping the long term perspective in mind the government of india has been mature when there will be economic you know consequences in maldives because you can you can throw out the indians tomorrow who are working in the hotels or running the restaurants the chinese suddenly will not come to maldives and run the restaurants for you so you would face economic consequences and backlash you can buy an inhaler for 200 dollars instead of a 2 dollar inhaler that you can import from india that's your choice as as a country if you are in a debt trap if you are have a problem with with any kind of calamity tomorrow um you know then india can have the choice of not going or going that's the government of india would decide but two things i think there will be severe economic backlash from the people of the country um because of the challenges they would face and muizu i am not i don't think it's a, he's a long term player i think he is by now very rich the chinese cultivate such proxies uh this way it's an independent sovereign country they can do what they want but the problem is muizu like kp oli or perhaps like the rajapakshas were doing the work of a proxy on behalf of china i think india in certain way has been a little slow paced but i think many countries in south asia and elsewhere and that's why the global south is so much in favor of india that they want india to be the voice of global south is because we have never for the sake of our interest used any country as a vassal state or have put them into a debt trap that is something i think many countries are realizing my last point uday you know how the chinese put a debt trap i'll give you an example from a document i have personally gone through 
when the Chinese come and put up a project, there is no tendering the OEM, the original co contract goes to a Chinese company. You have to take finance from a Chinese bank. You have to insure the entire project from a Chinese insurance company with an upfront payment of 6% by the host country to the uh, Chinese. And if you cannot repay the entire project cost within a stipulated time, the ownership goes to the Chinese. The semi-finished goods and the semi-finished materials and finished materials all come from China. Semi, you know, semi-skilled and skilled employees come from China. Free trade agreement is mandatory. Your country gets overwhelmed with Chinese goods. All that you can get is unskilled labor supply and profit goes to China. Liability is yours. So these countries will be in debt trap. It's for them to decide. If the president of Papua New Guinea comes and touches the feet of the prime minister of this country, if the African Union is today elected for what India has done, then I think there is a turnaround happening. Geopolitics is not something that can be just in a few years. So I'm sure the government of India has things in mind, but let's not presume that the Chinese will not do anything and it's in our backyard. That is the problem. So you would have your own countermeasures and I'm sure the government is working on that. And that is exactly the reason why Indian government has not made any derogatory statement or any strong statement against Maldives. Because a section of people of Maldives in the political dispensation, the other side, they're strongly in favor of India. So let's give some time to it. Let's not overreact. But people of the country, people like us, ordinary people, we have the right to decide if we don't want to go to Maldives. That is not something anyone can tell to us with all due respect that why are you not going to Maldives? I have the right to promote my own country and my, promote my own destination. But, you know, the only thing is we should not, uh, you know, equate it as a large country and a small country and that it is in our fold. That is where things get sour. And I think the government of India has not acted like that. It has acted that, okay, you are a democratic country, you can take your decisions. But I'm sure Maldives will face consequences as from Laos to Cambodia to Sri Lanka uh, to Philippines to Nepal to Bangladesh to Pakistan all are faced. The rest they will decide. So far as India is concerned, you know, 88 military personnel for uh, disaster management and humanitarian assistance for maintenance of uh, Donia aircraft is not a big deal. You know, Lakshadweep and everything else that we have in our port, I think that these no, are great no, places no. to ensure that you can take care of us. Major Sivaj, I think you wanted to react. Yes, please go ahead, sir. See, Uday, the point is that if there are 80 military personnel which are there, they have yes. not gone of their own. They have been an agreement between us and Maldives. By now coming on a diktat that by 15th March you withdraw them, this will not be in the interest of India. It is a strategic interest that we keep our presence. And I'm sure the government of India is not going to react in hurry. We are going to now decide it after discussing with Maldives. The point today is it can't be whims and fancy of Maldives government that one government comes and says that you withdraw this 80 personnel, those who have gone on the agreement signed between both the countries, the government of them and these people who are there, they are owned for the benefit of the Maldives people. They are doing disaster management, medical treatment. They are also doing recce surveillance for Maldives. So my point is that two, three issues. One is that, yes, Maldives is becoming a hub center of Chinese activity. Not only that, now it will come, it is already there. Remember what China had done it. That if you steal a cocoa island and Kua Kapu in Myanmar, Chittagong in Bangladesh, Hamantota in Sri Lanka, in case they get this Maldives, uh, two of the island, if they develop as a military base, then in East Africa, Djibouti, then Gwadar in Pakistan. How they are trying to encircle it? Whatever may be the thing, the point is that Maldive <laughs> government must be put under pressure. They cannot be having a negative attitude toward India. And we say, okay, let's now withdraw ourselves. And let them get into a, a, a debt trap of China. And then we will look into it. Then it will be too late. It was too late even in, even in the case of Sri Lanka. So I suppose we have to be proactive. And I'm sure the, pro, the government of today is very, very proactive. They are not passing any... A statement which can be a create a sort of a misunderstanding between the two mature countries but certainly we are our action has to be very firm it is Please, not going to I... be taken for granted 
another thing which I want to tell you is that where it will make a difference is who is the first responder whenever the problem comes to Maldives. It is not China but India because due to the proximity and we are the net security provider in South Asia. I suppose in time to come the economy will play a major role and the Maldives will realize it. Over dependence of in China will be a self-inflicting injury on two aspects. One is it, they will not able to afford economically and the second thing is that they will come under debt trap and then they will not able to come out. They will become like a, a state owned by China the way it has happened to Pakistan. Uday. Yes, uh, well, uh, yes, uh, Wing Commander Bakshi, I'll leave you the last word. I personally feel India has taken this as very seriously. This is not a, a casual matter. We are now going to make a, changes in our, our doctrinal approach, mm -hmm. especially from the naval point of view. There will be more patrolling will be done, very aggressive patrolling will be done, which India is capable of doing it. And, uh, and there will be a threat to the present regime also from various uh, 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 non-state actors. Just watch out. Even that will be attempted. So India will be willy-nilly, will have to take interest. So India just cannot walk out of the place or India will have to show its diplomacy. External Affairs Minister will have to handle it very adeptly and very dexterously. Thank you. Lev. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, I'm going to have to leave it at that. Uh, my thanks to all of our guests for joining us on this uh, discussion. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.